Two weeks ago, Sinclair announced a new micro. It's the Spectrum 128, a memory-expanded version of their best-selling, although now ageing, home computer. And already, Sinclair claimed to have taken orders worth £14 million. It was launched last year in Spain, but it wasn't available in British shops because Sinclair still had vast stocks of the older 48K machine to sell. Sinclair say the new Spectrum is aimed at the so-called entertainment market. Well, that's games to you and me. But for some inexplicable reason, there isn't a joystick port to be found on it. Well, presumably Sinclair still have a vast warehouse full of Interface 2s. However, they have taken the opportunity of sorting out some of the shortcomings of the earlier machine. For instance, the old dot crawl, which uh, caused a lot of criticism of the picture quality, has now been eliminated. And there's a new 8-pin DIN socket on the back here providing composite video or RGB output, so now you can use a high-resolution monitor. Well, of course, you can still use a domestic TV if you like, like this. There's also much better sound, which now comes out of the TV speaker. Well, hardly Kurzweil, but not too bad. It uses a standard three-channel sound chip, and already the cynics are saying that at last the Spectrum has the sound capabilities of the long-dead Auric. However, it is a big improvement on the inaudible old beep. Now, this program here is called Gladiator from Domark. It's been specially written for the 128, but prospective owners will be worried about compatibility with existing spectrums, for which there are some 5,000 titles. We spoke to Sinclair Research, who said it was overwhelmingly compatible, but warns that some peaks and pokes may not work. Certainly the programs I've tried have worked. In fact, this is actually two micros in one. On Power Up, just reset it, it kicks off in 128 mode, as you see, and it's ready to load a tape at a single key press. But I can select the 48K mode, quite simply, like so, and there you are. As you now see, it claims to be a vintage 1982 machine. And just for old time's sake, they've even kept a few of the original bugs in the ROM. But here's something it certainly couldn't have done in 1982. It's controlling a music synthesizer through its musical instrument digital interface, or MIDI for short. As you can hear, it works fine. The MIDI socket just here also doubles as an RS-232 port, well, at least according to the label they've got here, and that means, in theory, you can now drive printers and modems. But, and this is pure Sinclair, this socket conforms to no known MIDI or RS-232 standard, and even though this looks like a regular telephone plug, it isn't. So, the new machine has a few new features, a few enhancements, but it's no dramatic advance on the old spectrum. So, earlier today, I asked Alison Maguire, the marketing manager at Sinclair, why they had bothered. We bothered because we wanted to give people more features that would make the 128 a better entertainment machine and, and an easier machine to use for programming. And we've tripled the memory, we've vastly improved the sound, and we've added a new uh, piece of software that makes it easier for people writing basic programs. Such advantages as there are have got to be measured against the price, which people are saying her is horrendous, £179. How do you justify that? Before Christmas, we took the 128 out into the marketplace and we asked people uh, several questions about it, including what they would guess the price would be. And the vast majority set the price at between 170 and 180. And don't forget, we include two completely free games for that, both of which sell for 995 each at the moment. Why is there no joystick port and why is the MIDI non-standard? We thought very carefully about putting in a joystick port, but decided not to because we knew it was important that the 128 should be software compatible with the 48. There is no standard joystick interface. If we'd built one in, we would have lessened compatibility. As for the MIDI interface, we have used the same socket as we used on the QL, and, we, and it doubles as an RS-232 port. Who's going to use it? Are people going to upgrade from their 48s, do you think? Anyone will use this computer if they want to use a computer for having fun and learning to program. I think people probably will want to upgrade from their 48, but I think most of our customers will be new users of computers, first-time users. Does that mean the 48 is now going to bite the dust? Not at all. We think there's a lot of life yet left yet in the 48K and we'll be selling it for a long time to come. Alison, thank you very much. Thank you.